Hibernating the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W vastly reduces its power needs, which makes battery powered projects practical for things like IoT sensors. It may even make green energy and solar powered projects viable in the UK, where sun's not something we can guarantee. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. In this video, I'm returning to the tricky area of putting the Pico into a dormant state, and importantly, returning it to a full operational state afterwards. I started this project a good couple of years ago, but got stuck, not being able to reliably recover the Pico from that dormant state. Things have moved on, and I've got some reliable code to share. Not everything works perfectly though. This is engineering, and sometimes there are challenges. So Wi-Fi connectivity while using FreeRTOS kernel, a common use case for me, does not behave correctly in hibernation. I do have a workaround, which I'll share later in the video. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year. I appreciate your help in getting them there and hope to see you there too. Please hit that like button on the video and subscribe for more. The reason I want to do Hibernate is I want to build battery powered projects. And I've done a few battery powered projects in the past and you've seen me uh, talk about LiPo shims and you've seen me have this badge and put a, a battery onto the badge as well. So if we look at a battery and we take, say, the battery that is on my badge, well, that's a 500 milliamp hour battery, which is great. So um, in awake mode, we're going to be burning at least 25 milliamps of power with a Pico W. Um, if I can get it to go hibernate and into dormant, well, I've reduced that massively to only 0.7 milliamps. So strangely, we can actually have different amounts of uptime across the two options. Awake, if we're burning 25 milliamps of power for a Pico W, uh, which I measured by flashing an LED, then I can keep that running from that 500 milliamp hour battery by 20 hours, if I've got my mass right. Now, if I can mix that with some dormant time, so perhaps we only stay awake for 10 seconds and flash the LED for 10 seconds. And then for the rest of the minute, we go into dormant mode. Well, that 20 hours suddenly becomes four days, nine hours. If on the other hand, I was to actually say, well, let's make it just 10 seconds every five minutes. Well, now we're online for about 14 days. So there are massive difference if we can just actually go into dormant mode for some time. In most sensor use cases where we're actually just going to check a sensor value like temperature um, or wind speed or uh, humidity, actually those things don't change very significantly. So we can just sample that um, for say a few seconds, take that reading and then go to sleep for a while and then come back and sample it again in exactly this model, which means battery power becomes actually viable. And, you know, I live in the UK. Um, the, we don't have the greatest amount of sun here, or always. Um, so solar power projects can be a bit of a challenge. They certainly need battery backup. But if I've got, I'm of course, going to have a battery power to run for 14 days, then I've probably got a good chance that my battery might actually get recharged by solar in that period. Whereas if I'm only trying, got enough power for 20 hours, um, yeah, in the UK, there's no way solar is actually going to keep me up. Um, I, you know, a cloudy day and that's it, we're dead. Now, of course, I've just talked about there of roughly 25 milliamps is what a Pico running an LED is, is driving. But obviously, if you've got other controls or if you've got a more complicated screen or you've got other sensors or you've turned on Wi-Fi, all of those are going to drain further. So we're actually balancing that against what the size of our battery is and any recharge strategy we've got for that battery. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. 
every IoT engineer needs a good partner to help with building PCBs. PCBWay is that perfect partner. PCBWay strives to be the most professional PCB manufacturer for prototyping and low volume production work in the world, which makes them a go-to place for makers like me to help me fabricate and assemble my low volume PCBs in their own in-house production service. PCBWay have lots of options for PCB types and coatings, along with instant quotation through their website for most services. They can help with project hardware too, through 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal work, or injection molding. Get some inspiration from their community project site, or buy some ready-made modules from the module store. Go take another look at PCB Way. Now I'm learning like you're learning, like we're all learning all the time. And to quote Einstein, you know, I am sitting on the uh, shoulders of giants and the giant that actually has done some of this work and pushed some of this forward is uh, GitHub Coder and I've based a lot of what I'm going to talk about today from his repo. Though I've actually rewritten it and there is a new repo which tries to uh, encapsulate some of his code into some classes so that I can reuse it across some of my projects. And my repos actually got um, three example projects in it. One that's uh, simple, single core, just uh, it's going to flash an LED and we'll have a look at that in a second. Then of course uh, turning on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is going to be kind of important for a lot of my battery powered projects because they're basically going to be sent remote sensor um, either on IoT or web services. And then FreeRTOS. A lot of my code uses FreeRTOS. Um, I use that a, a lot to allow me to run multiple tasks and um, what I need to be able to um, go into a hibernate mode from the middle of FreeRTOS as well. So we've got an example on that. Um, there should be an example of course in there about using FreeRTOS and Wi-Fi together. Um, but well we will come to the story about that but that doesn't quite work or I can't quite get that to work right now. Um, but I'll talk about that in a bit. So I just want to make clear a bit of dependencies on this. Um, I have failed with this uh, project and these experiments before in the past on previous versions of the SDK. So I want to just make it clear that I'm running the Pico SDK version 151 and Pico Extras project uh, version SDK 151 as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a Pico and I'm going to have a or Pico W and I'm going to have that Pico W flashing an LED and uh, then hibernating and I'm going to wake it up using a real time clock. So um, I'm going to use basically a DS3231 real time clock, which is real time clock I've used before and I've got some other videos on. I'm going to use a particular version of this called the Chrono Dot version 2. Um, they're easily available, you'll find them um, uh, on lots of places. The reason I'm using that one is um, it has no pull up resistors for I2C or the interrupt, which means that I can rely on the um, Pico providing those pull ups. Now that's really useful for me because that means in software I can actually pull up those lines and in software I can choose to actually remove those pull-ups and therefore remove the current drain that those pull-ups cause. So I can, although not reduce it by necessarily very much, theoretically in software I would be able to actually reduce the drain even further for the large periods of dormant activity. So let's take a look at an example where I'm simply going to run this single core and I'm going to uh, just stay up for a, a few seconds flashing the LED and then go to sleep for the rest of the minute. So over in the repo let's take a look at the first example which I'm going to call simple and that's in the example folders here and there it is simple. Now actually there's just one file in there main.cpp because it is absolutely simple um, and all it's going to do is just flash that LED and then go to sleep. But the actual code to have and all this hibernation and going to, uh, into this dormant state, 
that's actually over here in the source because I'm going to try and make that a library that I'm going to reuse. So the first part in that library really I want to talk about is this DS3231 driver. So this is what's controlling and running my real-time clock. And this is code that um, I've evolved and I've actually used before because um, I've done some work with a DS3231 on the channel before and you can go and find that video. What I've added to it this time is the ability to uh, set a delay alarm for how many minutes you want to, to wait. So basically if you tell it to sleep for, for one minute it will not necessarily sleep for one minute, it will sleep until the minute value changes on the clock. Uh, two minutes it will sleep until that value changes twice. So at the first time you sleep it isn't exactly a minute I must admit um, but that's just the way I happen to have implemented it. Um, and then we can also clear an alarm because when when that alarm goes off we're actually going to be um, dropping a GPIO pad to zero and we want to clear that and allow that um, to float again and so that's what the clear alarm does. The other part of this is dormant and this is what is going to do the magic of uh, allowing us to hibernate. And dormant works with the real-time clock so we can set the real-time clock if we choose to do so. If you don't and you just want to wait by a GPIO pad then actually this library would do that too but um, the example I'm showing here is with a real-time clock. So we've got the ability to sleep uh, just until we get wakened by a particular GPIO pad or sleep for a, bit, a period of time uh, in minutes uh, which is going to use that real-time clock and then get woken by that uh, wake pad. There are a few other uh, helper routines in here as well around observers and um, some other code but we'll talk about that in a while. So let's have a look at the main code here for how all of this works and let's start by having a look at sleep with minutes. So if we've got sleep and we've got some time what we're actually going to do is tell our real-time clock that we want to clear any alarms that have been present and set a delay to wait for that number of minutes and then we can go to sleep. After we wake up we will clear any alarm uh, that we've got and uh, we were also we're going to run a bit of notification with notifiers as well to say whether either we're going to go to sleep or we've woken up. Um, sleep itself is basically going to make sure that our wake pad is actually pulled up so that the uh, real-time clock can actually drop that to zero to wake us. It's then going to do some work using the Pico Extra library and using a routine to provided in there to actually change the clock we're using to control the Pico to the XOSC, the XOSC clock. That's important because basically to hibernate what we're actually doing is just shutting down all of the clocks to make everything go nice and quiet and us go to dormant. And then we can sleep and, and actually go into our dormant stage. There is a big bit of work that we actually need to do locally though when we come back out of, of dormant and, and actually wake up and to really get everything running properly we then need to actually run and recover some of the clocks. So there's a recover from sleep function which is really really important and finally we are going to disable the pull ups so that I don't waste any power once I'm actually up and running. So there we go. So there's the recover from sleep, as I said, is really about clocks. So I happen to have taken values of all of these clocks and now I'm going to recover them and reinitialize the clocks and reinitialize standard IO. Um, now some of this code, the, particularly the reinitializing standard IO bit, used to be a problem. That used to cause this all to, to fall over. But in version 151, that's now all nice and stable and now it actually works fine. So I haven't had any problems with that this time. So let's have a look at main then. So what's our main code going to actually do? Well main's really just simply going to set up a GPIO pad and it's going to be able to use this function up here to flash a certain number of times before it actually goes to sleep. 
So what I'm actually going to do here is actually set up our, our real-time clock, flash 20 times, then I'm going to use dormant to um, drop off to sleep for a minute. Then we're going to come up, uh, back up, we're going to print that we've re um, resurrected from the dead, we're going to flash on um, the LED five times, and then we're going to go back into that sleep cycle. And we're just going to keep doing that forever. And that's what I'm going to show you now as a demo. So by flashing the LED, our Picos are burning roughly around 25 amps. And then it will drop into that dormant stage, and you see we've dropped that down really significantly. Um, that's reading just about one milliamp there. OK, let's power up the Wi-Fi on our Pico W and do a, a similar test. Now, for Wi-Fi, we obviously have to initialize the Wi-Fi controller. We then got to connect to Wi-Fi, then we've got to do some work. But then before we go to sleep, it's really, really key. We need to de-initialize the Wi-Fi because otherwise that CYW43 um, chip on the Pico W is actually going to take quite a lot of current and burn quite a lot of power from our battery. So we have to go through this de-initialize step first. So the Wi-Fi example is almost identical, really. I've got a little bit more code in here because I've now got a Wi-Fi helper where I've got some uh, functions to just help me with uh, initializing and de-initializing Wi-Fi. Because actually that's one part we will now have to do. I've long been initializing Wi-Fi, fine, to set it up and get us online. But actually you have to de-initialize it, otherwise you're going to continue to be burning quite a lot of current, even when you go into hibernate mode. So we need to turn all of those chips off and tell it that Wi-Fi is gone. And we do that with the de-initialize function. Um, the details of these... Well, initialize is just doing the CYW43 arch in it and setting up uh, the power management. De-initialize is just doing the CYW43 arch de-init step. So they're pretty simple, um, nothing really complicated going on there. And so our main function is going to be pretty much the same of what you've just seen uh, with um, our simple example, except that we're now going to be calling uh, the de-initialize de step every time we go to sleep and then when we wake up we are actually be re-initializing the Wi-Fi connection and setting up Wi-Fi again and then de-initializing um, de before going to sleep and going back into a dormant step. Now I've had a little bit of trouble trying to measure current through this experiment. My multimeter like most has a 200 milliamp uh, setting or a 10 amp setting. Um, and nothing in between those two. Now the Pico W, to my great surprise, um, actually draws more than 200 milliamps in order to actually establish connection with Wi-Fi. So I'm running this on the 10 amp scale, which means that when we're dormant, we're actually going to be reading zero. It's really about one milliamp, but uh, I, on this scale, of course, that shows out as zero. Then you'll see the multimeter actually jump and uh, it's going to register about 0 0.05 amps. Um, it actually is going out quite a bit higher than that momentarily and then dropping back down to 0 0.03 amps um, for stable Wi-Fi connection before going back to sleep. The other example I want to have a look at is FreeRTOS. Now I use FreeRTOS a lot. I use it with lots of tasks and we're just going to flash our LED but this time I'm going to have that LED flashed by a separate task, which means that I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful because if we just go to sleep at any point, we might go to sleep while that LED is on. And that would definitely be bad because that LED is going to be burning current. So we do actually need to get a little notification going on to shut down the task and tell it, turn that LED off. So my free RTOS example isn't actually going to be much different. Um, it's got a few more classes and we've obviously got port because we've got the configuration to set up free RTOS in here. But actually, um, you know, it is still quite a simple example because all we're going to do is flash an LED. That LED flashing now, though, I am going to put into a task and uh, that's what this blink agent is. It's uh, responsible for just flashing the LED. Now, 
because it's in a task and because it's therefore away from what's going on in our main code, um, I'm going to have to be a little bit uh, uh, clever and actually notify it that we're going to sleep. And that's what this dormant notification is about. Because without that, there is a danger that we drop into a dormant state with the LED actually on. And that's sort of self-defeating because that LED will actually then be burning current why we're permanently on for all of the time until we wake up. And that would be a really, really bad idea. So we need to turn that LED off. And the way we do that is we get a notification that we're going dormant. Um, there we is, yes, notification dormant. And when we get that notification, we can actually turn that LED off and stop our blinking. Then when we get notification to wake back up, we can re-enable the uh, LED to flash. And that's what's in here. And if we uh, have a look at the code in here, they, you'll see uh, that I'm actually doing being a little bit sneaky and uh, shutting down tasks and things. Um, so that we're actually going to suspend the task uh, if we get notified to go dormant and I'm mainly going to force the LED to be off. And then when I get notified to wake, I'm going to actually resume my task um, allowing me to go back to flashing that LED. And that's what that, that, that's all about. So our main task, um, well, it's not really any different to most of my FreeRTOS applications. Um, we're just going to uh, start up FreeRTOS, start up the scheduler, and then we've got a boot thread here, which is going to start up our blink um, and be responsible for triggering this dormant uh, code so it's got all the code that we've seen previously around uh, creating the real-time clock and using dormant to go to sleep only difference here is now we're adding an observer and we're allowing blink to observe the fact that uh, we are going into a dormant state so it gets that notification and then every time we go to and um, then we're going to go through this loop and keep going to sleep and then waiting 10 seconds and uh, repeating really so this isn't going to look very different to our other examples. We can see why it's flashing. We're burning around about 30 milliamps. And then when we drop into a hibernate, we're going down to one milliamp. But you can see that the LED has gone off. Um, you can even see that by the multimeter. It would be higher than one milliamp if the LED was still running. And we can reliably run the task and knowing that actually that uh, notification is shutting down that, that um, LED. The final example I wanted to put in here is to show you really what my workhorse is where I'm using Wi-Fi, LWIP and FreeRTOS all the, together giving me sockets and uh, full IP stack. And I use that then to drive things like you know web services and we've seen some web services examples on the channel. MQTT for IoT protocols, um, SNTP so I can get the time to my Pico W and set the clock accurately, and you know even actually web sockets I've done where I'm actually doing uh, bidirectional web socket transfers. The problem is um, right now the code to do that and go into a dormant state is definitely broken. And uh, I don't think it's broken my side. I think this is a issue coming uh, from the Pico SDK. So what do you actually see? What do I mean by broken? Well, it appears that something in the interrupt handling uh, is not working and not being cleared down by deinitializing the Wi-Fi. Because uh, we come up and we will find that there is a um, IRQ handler chain um, assertion failure. And that's it, the code is then dead and stopped at that point. So this is a bit of a problem of what we do about that. Now, if you run that against uh, the Pico SDK version 1.5.1, actually that fails on the first cycle, so it immediately fails. Um, if you run it against uh, the latest version of the development code for the uh, SDK, well, actually that survives five cycles, so it's a little bit better. So there's a, certainly some stuff going on there. Um, 
Uh, I guess one of your questions might be, well, why is this different from the code that's running in my other examples? This is running a different version of the library. Remember, when we use uh, a free RTOS and LWIP, we actually do pick up a different set of code and it is a different deinitialized function that is being run. So um, there is some differences on this example of what's actually run and what's causing this. Um, I will continue to look at this and see if I can work out what's going on and read through the many other people who seem to have uh, found similar uh, issues around this code and see, um, see if I can get a working version. In the meantime, is there a way around this? Is there a workaround? Um, well, yes, there is. And really the workaround is when you come back from sleep, reboot. Uh, that way you've got a clean Pico coming back up and you can do all of the connection to Wi-Fi and, and your work stack again. And that cycle works fine. Uh, how do you reboot a Pico and do that reliably? Well, the best way to reboot a Pico is to use the watchdog timer. So if I just enable the watchdog timer and te um, tell it to run off, uh, that timer will run down and when it hits zero, uh, which it will do in a fraction of a second with those numbers, um, it will actually reboot the uh, Pico and then we will come up and reconnect again. Um, so this works fine and in sort of a web service uh, orientation, you know, I can I can do that for some sensors and that will be fine. What I can't do easily in this model is then keep any values or variables from one cycle to the next. And that's not an ideal scenario. Um, yes, I could probably write them into Flash, but again, it's really not an ideal scenario. Um, but uh, this is a, a, a partial workaround, I think, for the problem. Not everything works perfectly, I do admit. I'm not the only one to have had issues in this area. It's quite a complex area of the SDK to debug, but I will keep you updated on any progress I made. Why not follow me on Instagram, as that's where I'll probably post my first success in this space. It's a place to follow me for the inside story. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I appreciate your help in getting me there. I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.